Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at this beautiful off-grid tiny house. We're here in the Nanaimo BC at Rewild Homes and we're meeting up with Patrick and Thomas and they're going to give us a full tour of the home. But first we want to say a quick thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Stick around at the end of the video, we'll give you a bit more information about how Squarespace makes it easy to create a new website. And now let's get back to the off-grid tiny house tour. This is the, the Blue Heron. Uh, it's a 24-foot off-grid uh, tiny house. We're about uh, 200 square feet. Uh, fully off-grid, uh, more of a, a cozy kind of a layout, um, utilitarian if you will. We've got a, a seating nook uh, right here, some custom uh, bench seats. These of course also have soft closing custom uh, drawers for storage. It, it hasn't been installed right now but there's just the drop down uh, eatery kind of desk. Uh, it has a dual fold out uh, and then these can, can relocate for the, the seating area. Difficulty with off-grid is, is storing batteries and logic. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we, after releasing a, a soft opening of this uh, show home, we had a lot of people comment saying, as soon as you walked in, this big box was here. Mm -hmm. We didn't like it, it didn't flow. So right away we modded it out and we turned it into a, another uh, bench seating area. So under here, uh, I'm not gonna bother getting into the, the logistics of it. Thomas, uh, he can describe, but this is just a way to house uh, some of the logic and get it out of the way. Uh, we've designed it to be off-grid. Uh, it comes with six 285 watt solar panels. The battery bank is uh, six six volt 415 amp hour batteries. It's about 15 kilowatt hours of power. So you cut that rate in half right away because you don't want to go below 50% of capacity because you start to damage the life of your batteries. So we sized it quite large for a tiny home. Like mm -hmm. it's it's quite big, but uh, because we're running the uh, the fridge and, and that uh, that sucks up a lot of, a lot of electricity, so. So here's the inverter and um, all the logic. The uh, charge controller is just in the back there. This is on a rail system so we could pull it in and out for maintenance. Uh, shouldn't have to be moved very much, mm -hmm. um, but just in case. So you can pull it right out and, and open it up so you can get at the breaker box. This, uh, this E-panel. All six batteries are placed in these two cubby holes here and that's right over top of the axles just because they're so heavy, they're almost a thousand pounds. So the solar power is everything. The lights are uh, directly off the battery and they're um, they're just fused. So they're all 12 volt. All of these lights are, are just 12 volt puck lights. Um, and then like the fridge and all of the plugs, um, the, the fan are all 120 volt. You need your power, your water, and to get rid of your waste. <laughs> so we've got uh, the solar system uh, rainwater collection with a barrel uh, filtration and 12 volt pump can be easily set up with this unit and then uh, it's the separate uh, uh, composting toilet and then you're set up with the wood heat you're good to go so as you can see the blaringly obvious uh, main source of heat is this uh, more so wood stove there are options that are less expensive than the more so. However, usually they're quite a bit bigger and their clearances, uh, you know, cause the stove to be way out in the way. So uh, quite a bit more expensive, but worth it. More so's products are fantastic, very happy and low clearances. Also smaller in a space like this, uh, especially where, you know, we, we use uh, spray foam insulation. So um, the R value is really good and it's such a small space anything bigger than this is going to blow you out. Because of having wood heat, we also have a, a quite a almost industrial strength a fan to be able to keep it because one of the, the most important things in tiny homes, as people who've looked into it know, is circulation and ventilation. Mm -hmm. um, the two biggest issues. Heating, honestly, isn't, isn't one of those issues. Mm -hmm. uh, it's making sure that, that moisture is down and, and air circulates and heat moves around properly. So. Nobody really likes ladders, so we always have everybody asking us stairs, stairs, right? So we do our best to maximize uh, and put custom uh, storage or cubbies. We go back and forth with the framing style. It seems 
you know, when, when someone's on a budget, usually that's when they select the, the shed slope style roof. You can't argue that this feels more like a home where you have your, your gabled with, for lack of a better term, call it a, a dormer or a bump up for uh, or the loft. It just creates that feeling. You don't feel like you're losing all your headspace down the other end. And it always depends on how you orient your bed and, and you know, how you access the loft too, so. We usually end up doing double sinks. It's one of those things, it's preference, but it always comes in handy in small spaces for stores. And mm -hmm. you don't wanna be doing dishes every single meal sometimes, so. Mm -hmm. uh, double sinks, uh, fairly decent amount of, of uh, storage and cabinetry. Um, full size oven, uh, range. Uh, cooking is gas, obviously. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the rest of it's fully off grid uh, via solar. Fridge. Uh, the solar covers that, no problem. Uh, all the 12 volt lighting as well. Water heat is is um, a precision temp, fantastic product, on demand, propane. Another important thing is is having, as I mentioned before, circulation was one thing, but ventilation is really important too. And for anybody who knows, even in a regular house, if you're just boiling a pot of water for pasta or, or whatever, you're, you're gonna get steamed out. And so, of course, we put a, a, a hood fan in here, as well as a, a fan in the, in the bathroom as well. As with the rest of the home, the bathroom is incorporated into off-grid with a separate composting toilet. There's a, an alcove shower with a glass uh, pivot door. A lot of times that storage is the main issue and there's not many other places in the house that you can have a full, full height uh, storage closet. So in here we just have a, a linen closet to house the, the propane heater, water heater, mm -hmm. as well as linens, clothes, uh, quite a bit of storage in that one at least relative in a tiny house uh, we also have um, spot plumbed in wired and plumbed for a, a combo washer dryer this home is built on a 24 foot dual axle uh, two 7,000 pound axles the roofing is is tin roofing the siding is all uh, cedar channel especially when we're building in in our local climate we're kind of partial to local products as well as materials that are going to last in this kind of a, a, a climate being in so so wet and it just it lasts longer. Hope you enjoyed checking out this off-grid tiny house. We really appreciate that Squarespace sponsored this video. Sponsorships like these help us keep the channel going. If you're looking into creating a new website, Squarespace is basically a one-stop shop that makes it easy to build a website even if you have no experience. You can get domain names, website templates, and set up an online store all in one place. And they even have 24-7 customer service. It's just a really nice platform that's easy, user-friendly, and it's great for people like us who don't really know anything about building websites. You can start your free trial today at squarespace.com, and you can also get 10% off your first purchase if you go to squarespace.com slash exploring alternatives. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. We post a new video every Sunday.